Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to be starting up the Fairmont project videos again, but they're not going to take over the channel. They're going to be sprinkled in throughout here and there. Now I have several videos of the build of this uh, car, which I will say, love or hate the Fairmont project, this car right here ended up featured in Hot Rod Magazine. Yes, my first build, this Ford Fairmont, is featured in Hot Rod Magazine. I'll link that down below. But to get more to the point here, what I was originally doing with the Fairmont videos is talking about the installation of different things like the differential and all that kind of stuff. My original intent with the Fairmont project was to walk you through all the different systems of the automobile in a performance light. So this is how a transmission works and this is how we're going to make the transmission better to handle the kind of power that we're dealing with. That was my original intent, but the project was huge. My first build, as I mentioned, and kind of got away from me. But now I'm getting back into those edits. I still have a ton of footage on this build that I want to share with you. I think it has a lot of value. This car has come a long way since the episode that you're about to watch. My point in mentioning this is instead of going through and saying this is installing this, this is installing that, this is going to be basically episodic from here on out to the end of the build when I start it up. And then there's some more after that because, well, let's face it, project cars are never done. That being said, I don't want to take up too much of your time because the video that is ahead of you is a long video, but this will be episode one or whatever it is that I'm going to call it. Uh, and then we're just going to keep on going with episodes after that. And we're going to continue on with the build. And as I said, we end up with a happy ending with this car in Hot Rod Magazine. I'm very proud of that fact. Anyway, let's get to the action already in progress. Take it away, Eric. It occurs to me some of you may not be aware of where we are in the Fairmont project. Well, Right now, I have an aftermarket K-member and front suspension that I got from a viewer out in Washington State. Since that time, I've talked to uh, an expert, Jack Henley over at Maxima Motorsports, about the situation I have with the front suspension, and he made different recommendations. They engineer suspensions for Fox bodies. I trust their opinions. They know what they're talking about. So what we will be doing, and the reason we're removing the engine and transmission again, is because I need to replace this, which is called the K-member, which is what the engine bolts to. Also, the front suspension attaches to this as well as the power steering rack. And it will be a power steering rack because I'm switching from manual steering over to power steering as part of this process as well. We have to remove all of this stuff redo the whole front suspension. Uh, this may not be covered in this episode in particular, but this is where we're going, and this is one of the reasons why we're removing the things that we're removing today. So as a quick recap, as far as we are in the build as of today, and this is actually mid-February 2017, for those of you keeping count, engine has been test fitted, radiator and cooling system has for the most part been test fitted. Uh, one of the things I found out during the process of installing this, however, was that the air filter that was on the turbo was going to interfere with this upper radiator hose. Therefore, I've gone and uh, installed this 90 degree that I'm going to relocate the air filter out inside this fender. In order to get there, come on around, I'll show you. There needs to be a hole here but I don't want to cut a hole with all the stuff in the way and I'm about to remove the engine and transmission and radiator and all the stuff that is currently in the way. So I'm going to mark the area where I'm going to cut the hole out after all this stuff is removed uh, for job one. And then I'll start removing parts until all these are gone and we've got the front suspension swapped over. I hope that just coming in here like this and showing the general area where I'm looking to place it Sort of gives me something to start with, and then I can just take this off of here, set it up on here, and I can just trace around it. But I want to make sure that it doesn't uh, interfere with anything on the other side. Huh, I think I'm good. And this will be, honestly, sort of a stepping off point, because I may have to make it bigger or smaller, but at least this way I'll have an area. seems kind of round. I'm going to put this back on the turbo and point it down. That I'm hoping will help keep debris or anything from getting down into the turbo. Just like with any engine removal, one of the first things I'm going to take out is going to be the radiator. And since I test fitted everything, nothing is nailed down. So I should be able to just do this. I don't even need tools. Ta -da. I'm gonna store these in a safe place. I'm gonna remove this cold side pipe. I 
These actually came with the turbo itself, which I wasn't around for its assembly, but these were in a box I found recently. Another reason why I'm swapping the K-member and front suspension is when I install the new K-member, I have spacers that are gonna move the K-member down lower about a half an inch, and I'm hoping that's enough clearance because right now this is coming into contact with the hood when I put it down, and I don't really wanna alter the hood because that's gonna kinda kill my sleeper vibe. So I'm gonna try to drop the engine down enough so that uh, this will all fit underneath the hood nicely. That was easy. Now the exhaust pipe. I don't think I ever fully reattached this. I did not. Have I mentioned somewhere that I love working with new parts? <laughs> if I haven't, I love working with new parts. It's all kinds of awesome. remove the carburetor and get the plate, put it down on there. I already have a new carburetor gasket for when I put this back together for real. You might remember if you've seen the previous episode where I had installed this or taken it off of here uh, just after installing the engine and it tore the gasket. Have I mentioned that I love my carburetor? Like I love it unnaturally so. A man in his carburetor shouldn't have that kind of love, but I have it. And my carburetor loves the intake manifold because it's not coming off of it. Very happy I got a new one of those. This also helps keep junk out of here. I love how serviceable I made this. I really, really do. Want well, something weird? I think we're done up here. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, I'm working under the car now. Probably should have had these on earlier, but I had a quarter inch ratchet in my hand. <sighs> Getting dangerous. Wastegate's got to come off. I love how easy everything's happening at the moment. I should shut up though. The car gods will hear me and I will be severely punished. I guess we'll need these off. Oh no, my rotors are starting to get rusty. I have to get this car on the road soon so I can take care of that. Oh no. I'm gonna do the stabilizer bar next. This goes so easy when you don't tighten stuff. You should do this more often, right? I can't get through a video without dropping at least one thing. You just like watching me bend over, right? With this stuff, since I won't be reusing this, I have a whole new stabilizer bar, new end links and everything. This may turn into budget Mustang projects, so I'm gonna start putting the parts that may go with the Mustang over here because they're not going back up on. The ones that go back on are going to the bed of the pickup truck because that's a darn convenient place to put things. All right, now this water pump, I'm gonna move that because that may go back to the machine shop, but just about everything else in the back of this may end up on this car. These are all parts that I didn't end up using on the Fairmont, including the T5 that Paul Cangiolosi built me, which is awesome. We're not letting that go to waste. Way too much time effort went into that. I don't know. I'm addicted to go fast parts. I just, I can't help it. I didn't drop anything. Kind of awesome. I haven't had to bust out a tool yet, right? 
These aren't bad parts. Just like I said, Jack recommended other parts. He's a great salesman, by the way. I'm inclined to go with his recommendations. He does engineer suspensions for Fox bodies, after all. I figure he knows what he's talking about. Well, you knew it was gonna happen. Yay. While I'm at it, I'm also gonna remove the intercooler. I wanna paint these brackets. Also having the intercooler out of the way minimizes any risk of damage to it. So why not? Now that it's all fitted, I can put it right back where I want it to go. As I said, I'm gonna remove the intercooler as well to help protect it. Also so that I can paint these brackets. A lot of times on this car restoration shows, you hear them about bagging and tagging. Well, I also follow that practice. Whew. It's heavier than it looks. I'm just gonna loosen these. I'm not gonna take them all the way out. But I am about to pull the transmission out. But I just figure if these are loose, I can just come up and spin them out by hand. Like I said, not all the way out, just getting it started. Now, now I'm gonna pull the drive shaft so I can get the transmission out. And since I only ran these down finger tight, it is an easy prospect. Test fitting. I know everything's gotta come back apart, but leave yourself breadcrumbs. Yeah, for whatever reason, whenever I'm back here, I just can't seem to not hit my head. This is tricky with this torque arm. It's like I have to pull it out up this way and then Fish it down this way and then back. So it's like forward, backwards, forward. Doing this on the ground, oh, that's gonna suck. But this light, aluminum drive shaft, I mean, this thing is light. Very happy to have it. Some of you are like, the torque is gonna twist it in half. Well, we'll see. So Brian reminded me that there's a gear shift in here, which I forgot I put in, and uh, needs to be removed. Before we pull that transmission out. And with this all the way forward, the transmission will come out fine. So I'm part way through taking the transmission out after I got the shifter and everything, got that figured out. Then I realized the weight of the engine is still in the chassis and I had a lot of difficulty replacing the front coil springs without the weight of the engine in place. I need to remove those coil springs. In fact, I'll be replacing all of this anyway. So therefore, I'm gonna remove the coil springs now while I have the weight of the engine and transmission in the car, and hopefully it'll be easier. We'll find out. I'm gonna start by removing these grease fittings because I don't want to damage them. In fact, I'm gonna be placing a floor jack right under here. Oddly, the next thing I'm gonna remove is the steering rack. And the reason I wanna do this is so that I can move this back and forth as much as I want. I'm gonna disconnect the uh, ball joints this time to try and uh, lower this whole assembly. So I'll be removing this nut and it's easier to get to if I can turn this whole spindle back and forth. That's even easier to do without the steering connected. Usually I just hit this with a hammer, but I don't want to mess up my spindles because they're pretty and I am using them, so try this one instead. That works too. Once I get the rack out, I'll be able to do this. 
on both sides. Stick that anywhere I want so I can get to that nut much easier. I will now uh, disconnect the rack from this U-joint. That should be good. So light since it's manual. New rack has different spacers and everything on it. I'm going to store this like this so these don't get lost. I'll remove my cotter pins. The strut is like right in the way of these cotter pins. Ah. Mischief managed. With the rack out, cotter pins out, I'm gonna drop this down and my Zerk fittings are also removed. Drop this down, put a floor jack under here, remove that fastener and either lift it up or drop the jack down to see if we can get those coil springs out without too much damage. It's the last time we have to deal with those though. Now a few people had mentioned that uh, Maxima Motorsports or there is a type of spring compressor available that goes up through the center of the spring that you can use to compress the spring and probably have a much easier time of it than I did when I installed these springs. Just thought I'd put that out there now since, once again, this will be the last time I'll deal with these springs. I'm going to start on this side and I'll place this directly under the ball joint. I'm trying not to. You know, it might be better just to go under the spring mount here. All right, we'll give this a try. I honestly don't know if it's going to go down this way. And one more hint that I'll pass along to you that was passed along to me in the comments is instead of trying to connect the strut up in the uh, upper strut mount as I did when I installed these, another suggestion was to actually disconnect the inner part in here and jack this part up. So in other words, place the spring in here and then jack it up that way would be an easier way to uh, install the springs. Oh, this feels dangerous. Yeah, it's going right up against that thing now, isn't it? Well, I'll let a little tension off the jack and just see what it does. This isn't exactly what I'd hoped for. There's just no way not to ruin this backing plate now, is there? So it's really just got to come out of its perch. Want to know something weird? The second we turn off the camera, this thing just goes and pops down, literally the second. So there's, there's now tension on this. <laughs> we can go back to our regularly scheduled nut removal, already in progress. Having the weight of the engine in here is really helpful. Now I'm gonna slowly lower the jack and see what happens with the spring. That was very uneventful, just like I wanted it. Ta-da! Came out a lot easier than it went in, right? <laughs> like I said, they do have a spring compressor that goes up through the center here, hooks onto these coils and compresses it this way. This new spring that I'll be using for the coilover is significantly lighter than this. And I guess that's because this has a different type of mechanical advantage. But the weight savings is, as I said, significant. You can see there's a lot less spring there. Gonna try the same thing over on the other side. Ooh, looks like it's all spinning on me. Hmm. Kind of nice of somebody to weld those steering stops in there. I just need to get past that first part. Initial. Uh. 
starting to feel a lot like when they went in. I'd intended on removing these spindles anyway. And how I was gonna do that, I was gonna disconnect the brake line from the body. And I think that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. And just rather than try to fight with this ball joint all day, I need to remove these two up here anyhow. So I'll disconnect the brake line so I don't damage it. And then I'll uh, just blast these two bolts out here, drop it down that way, worry about the ball joint after the fact. I'm gonna use my new favorite method of putting the brake pedal to the floor and leaving it there so that I can open up the brake system. Now we close bleeder valve and we don't have to worry about all the brake fluid in the system bleeding out everywhere. See if we can't get that other side apart. My right, plan here is these bolts will still be in here holding everything together, but I'm going to take the nuts off the ends and then when I get it down on the ground, I'm hoping to just push the bolts through and be done with it. about the brake hose at all and that's why I'm glad I did this. With a whimper. I think I'm getting good at this auto mechanic thing. Let's try this again, but with impact. Now back to our regularly scheduled engine and transmission removal, already in progress. I love about all this stuff, this new stuff. It's so light. I mean, this thing is lighter than what I had uh, with just the stock stamp steel version. I mean, this is light.
I love how easy it is to take out this transmission because that's going to make clutch replacement a breeze. Although those Allen head fasteners up at the top of the bell housing, those are going to be a little challenging. I might just strap this down, leave it on here. It's not like I'm going to be using this for something else anytime soon. You know, I often wonder if a toe strap would just be quicker as I drop that on the ground. Stay, stay. I cannot wait to rip the dash out and get rid of that thing. Now I guess I'll take these nuts off the engine mounts and we can just pluck this engine out of here. I figure I might as well just take this bar out. It's only finger tight in here anyway. That way I don't have to worry about it being a destruction as I remove the engine. <laughs> really? Well, how about this? If I remember right, it was heavier in the front. So lifting it up like this should bring it straight up. Whoops. <laughs> you know, there's a certain satisfaction in knowing that everything that I engineered as far as getting this in and out of the vehicle just went that smoothly. The time I had to invest in order to get it in there and everything just paid off in spades because it's really only been a couple of hours that we've been working and this is out, the front suspension's apart and everything. If I were just to remove the engine and transmission, it would have been done even sooner. I guess our next step is to remove that K-member. These struts are going to have to come out also and I'm kind of in a good spot to where I could just knock them out real quick. At least it didn't hit the ground. It's the little things. These upper plates are also getting replaced. They won't work with the new struts. It's not that heavy, but it's kind of cumbersome. So I'm just gonna support it here in the center with this jack while I loosen all the fasteners. And when I'm done, hopefully I can lift it on out of here. Other than that, it's gonna drop on the floor. I also hook this back up. But if you remember, the threads on this one are kind of boogered up. So that one's not running. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. And you know, if and when I use this again, I will be sure to address that.
well, it was fun while it lasted. I'm going with a completely different fuel system. So everything I got here is no longer useful to me. I figure I'll just undo it right now. Also going to get rid of this steering shaft because I'm going with another one. I have to undo those screws to get that off of there. I'm just going to lower this down. It's just so much easier to come up from under here and do it. So I'm just going to get rid of all this all together right now. So. Another thing I'm thinking of, now that I'm just here, I'm not going to use this fuel line either. So I might just take this off now also. See you. I have to hit my head if I'm back here. You know I'm also losing this vent because I'm doing a completely new fuel system so the vent that's on here now is useless so I might as well pull that off too. Yep there's fuel in there. We'll call that one how to remove a fuel line on a Fox body Ford. I could have cut it, but now I got a nice piece of fuel line there. Here's that evap hose. Yes. We don't need this. Doesn't bug me anymore. This was the old shifter for the automatic. We don't have an automatic. I cannot wait to get rid of the Speedo cable. My new Speedo is satellite, so I don't even need to have any cable or anything. I just want this to go away. It's a reminder of an idea that I had, which is past tense. I now have what I consider a better idea for my fuel system. I have to run a boost regulated fuel pressure regulator, which I have. This is just a regular fuel pressure regulator. We're great for a regular carburetor. What I have here is the K-member spacer kit. This goes between the K-member and the body and will space it that much. It's going to be a little heavy, a little cumbersome. So I'm going to add oil to my threads now. Now we still have to align the K-member, which I'm not doing just yet. I really want to figure out if, and I'm not using it on this one because my ground strap goes to that one. I'm really trying to figure out if I've got hood clearance. So I'm just going to pop the K-member in there alone by itself, drop the engine in there and see how the hood fits. The ones in the back, fairly self-explanatory, they kind of go on one way. These, the way these go, the thick side goes towards the front and then the thin side goes towards the outside. So they go in up like this. run into a slight issue here and that is the rear mount for the K member goes into this well, nut plate whatever that actually floats around so floating retainer let's call it back here so that you can align the K member and everything 
I've come to find that there are a couple of different sizes of these and the last time when I went to install the K-member I had to modify it in order to get it to bolt up onto the vehicle. Well because I have the spacers and the new K-member, this, this is what's happening, just to give you a better idea. So you've got one that lines up and one that does not. So these spacers and this K-member are set up for a tighter spacing right here. So I'm thinking, I could clearance these in the same way I did before. And I'm not sure I want to go there because I think it might be easier to get a different one of these with a narrower spacing and then just elongate these holes on the body of the vehicle over here to accommodate the closer, tighter spacing and then not have to do any kind of clearancing on the K-member or on the spacer. But for now, since I'm just going to be test fitting the engine in here, I think what I'll do is I will just attach this back portion with one bolt and we'll have the other two bolts up here and that way we'll be able to see if this is enough space to give us the hood clearance we need, which is all I'm trying to figure out at this point. I can come back at a later time and deal with this. If I were on the ground where I have my uh, jack there, I'd be using a floor jack. So instead of this jack, I'd be using a floor jack. Remember how I showed you the orientation of these things? So, thin side faces the frame rail, fat side faces the front of the vehicle. I'm going to make a separate video just on uh, squaring up the K-member or locating the K-member. That video will be called squaring the K-member, that's what that's called. And once again, I'm only test fitting and I'm going to have to come back in and do this. So I'm not torquing these yet, but I think these are 89 foot pounds and these are 72 or something. When I actually go and complete the installation, I'll call out the torque specs, but just know I'm running these down now temporarily so I can fit the engine, check my hood clearance. Go the right way, Eric. pretty cool. You know, I wonder if the spacers on the Mustang are the right size. I wonder. So nice that I can reach the engine mounts from up here. Well, it does look lower already and the back end's kind of down a little bit. So I have to figure out some way to try to mimic the transmission. Like maybe go up under there and put a wood block under the back of the oil pan and just sort of lift it up to the point where I think, okay, that's about level. I'm gonna take this wood block and put it up underneath the back of the bell housing. I'm gonna lower the lift down a little bit just so that I can mock up where I believe it's gonna rest with the transmission in place. Seems right. I love this carburetor. Every time I look at it, I'm just like, I love it. <laughs> All right, moan of tooth. Tooth? Yes, I said tooth on purpose. Cameraman Brian and I are now going to lay the hood in place Let's see what kind of clearance we have. <laughs> Victory! You are still a sleeper. It latches. <laughs> but it's a quarter inch in the right direction. I think this is the only time in my life I'm happy to come up short. You know what, it's so close, we're gonna have to install the transmission. The way things are right now, 
it's actually touching and jack the back of the engine up more. So that's critical here. So no, I've got no other choice but to install the transmission and, and put the cross member in and, and just see where it sits then. And then I can decide on how to proceed from there. Okay, barely made it, like barely made it by a quarter inch. So I'm happy to put the transmission in there because I had the back end up just a little bit too high. But that's just enough, like just enough. Now I'm gonna check that cross brace that goes underneath the oil pan and see if that clears with the provided spacers. All right, I just found something now that this is lower inside the chassis here is my clamp is right up against this hose. Now this isn't the actual hose, this is actually my outer covering that I've made for it. So some shielding that I put on there, but having this hot exhaust clamp right up against the side of that, I don't like that at all. One of two things is gonna happen. And unfortunately I think the latter is what's gonna happen is, is I'll do this when it's actually back out of the car. So instead of having this clamp pointing this way, I'm going to have to take it off, turn it around and point it the opposite way. And that way it won't interfere with this when it's down inside the car. And I can manipulate the blanket so that I can pull it over that way a little bit more. I thought about doing it now, but looking at it, it looks like the best thing to do is just turn that clamp around the other way. Now that we know that we have hood clearance, the next thing I wanted to check was this brace that goes in the back here. Similar to my old K member, this one also has a brace that goes across the back here. But if you notice, I have the same problem I did before. All right, I wasn't quite ready to give up yet. And I was able to get this up on there, for now, like this. And there's clearance, like just a little bit of clearance in between the oil pan and the bar. The place where I don't have clearance is right here at the drain plug. Now I'm thinking I might be able to make this work if I just notch this out around the drain plug, like just enough. And if I'm able to do that, that solves that problem. So what I'm gonna do now is mark around the area of the drain plug, and I'm gonna grind off an area in, in that location. And then once I'm able to make it fit, this is a tubular construction. So once I'm able to make that fit, what I'm considering is uh, maybe just putting a small weld in there or something like that, just to give it the integrity again, if I need to. Another option would be to just go in there with a hammer and just put a dent in this bar right in that spot. And if I was able to hit it just right, that might be just enough. And I don't care if I have to remove this every oil change, so what? I can't have it butted right up against that drain plug because as the engine runs, it's gonna vibrate and it's gonna put stress on the oil pan and this bar. So we can't, we, we've gotta give them at least something close to the clearance that's between the oil pan and the back of the bar. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> mm -mm. Maybe. I can live with that. I can remove this drain plug too. So that solved it. A little bit of paint will hide my sins. One more whack. My concern is, is that as the engine moves and it torques around in here, which, you know, I expect it to, I don't want that drain plug coming into contact with this bar if I can help it. And I really didn't compromise the integrity of this tubing too much. I mean, yeah, I put a weak point right here. Other than that, it's still gonna provide some structure on the back side of the K member here. And I've got enough clearance to where I'll be able to change the oil without having to remove this. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that episodic version of uh, the Fairmont Project. As I said, I'm going to be sprinkling these throughout. I'm not going to take over the channel with just Fairmont videos. But there were a lot of people that, you know, were left hanging. And, well, I want to get back to it so that you aren't necessarily left hanging. Know that things have changed a lot on this car since this video was shot. Uh, I've since been driving it. I've put about 6,000 miles on it. As I mentioned, it's in Hot Rod Magazine. Anybody that's actually seen this car in person loves it. And, you know, the internet, internet may have some hate for it, but you know what? It's my car. I love it. And it's my show. So get your own show, build your own car, and show me how it's done. How about you do that? Anyway, I will put links in the description to additional Fairmont videos and additional information and all that kind of thing if you want to learn more. If you have automotive questions, I ask that you head to air at thecarguy.com. That will also be linked down in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also ring the bell for notifications when I post new videos. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.